Okay, welcome everybody. This is our second Sakai LTI technical briefing um, on January 14th, 2021. And Dr. Chuck is going to tell us all about um, Sakai LTI. Okay, thanks Wilma. I'll let you, uh, I was admitting people from the waiting room and I'll let you go back and admit all the other folks uh, coming in from the waiting room. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, I'm just going to jump right away to the to the to our document, and so I'm going to share my screen. And so at this point, you should see my uh, the the agenda. Of course, is the the document that uh, we all collectively prepare, and then Wilma uh, sends around. And so in the in the days and the days coming up to this, I fill this all up with really good stuff. Hopefully. Um, but I, I always like to start in case people are here for the first time. Um, our goals, and I credit Wilma and Josh for coming up with what I think is a great idea of just scheduling a meeting if, uh, and then recording those meetings because um, it really acts as a, um, just a, a nice, ri nice rhythm for us to uh, make sure that we're getting this word out. First off, these specifications always have finer detail in the cracks, right? Um, when we build these things, there are things we learn about and uh, figure out and we need to do that together. And eventually that can become a new part of the specification perhaps, or we just gotta do that together. Any uh, vendor doing resource, uh, doing LTI integrations with Sakai, we wanna make their task as easy as possible. Uh, we also want to um, draw valuable input into the formal LTI process. Um, and so, you know, we can, I, I will talk about emerging specifications. I'm not allowed to give you tremendous detail on them, but I can socialize them and tell you what's coming and then encourage you to join IMS. Uh, we're, we build open source reference implementations. Uh, the Sky is an open source LMS and Sugi is an open source uh, tool and both of them give us a great opportunity to uh, show you uh, what's going on. And you, know, you can just download them yourself and install them, or we can get on a Zoom and watch the logs. And it's just a lot easier sometimes to get a Sakai set up than it is uh, other, other proprietary vendors stuff getting them set up. And also just bring LTI implementers into the loop. Get accounts in our JIRA, fill out bugs, uh, Karen from Turnitin just filled a bug out this week. And, you know, she cuts right through. She doesn't have to talk to anybody. She doesn't have to find someone at Longsite and get them to type it in. Karen from Turnitin just goes in and puts a bug in. It ends up on my tracker and I go work on it. And uh, then when it starts getting fixed, uh, she gets uh, feedback, et cetera, et cetera. And then before, I'll just say there's, I'm going to just keep building these reference documents. Um, my test server, how to use the various things. Um, this, this, uh, this way of doing documentation is somewhat new. Um, previously, what we did was uh, I would build a feature and then I would write a test plan for the feature and our QA people uh, would uh, look at my test plan and um, not understand it very well because I'm really bad at writing test plans. And uh, and then what I started doing is I'm like, you know, I'll just write documentation on how I think it should work, really not aimed at the QA team. And then the QA team started saying, stop writing test plans, just write documentation and we'll write the test plan. And it also then tests the documentation. So, so you'll see increasingly more and more technical detail are sitting in these markdown documents. And we're, we're talking about gathering all this together. And there is actually at the basic LTI level, there is a MD file that's kind of a table of contents. And so every time we do something new or update something, I just write down for everybody, me, for you, for QA, et cetera, I write documentation down. So, so then I wanna talk about uh, the topics I wanted to cover today and I'll try to, try to keep it short and to the point and let you ask questions. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Wilma's very good at you know, popping in and interrupting or you can pop in and interrupt. It's not intended for me to just be talking. 
Um, so uh, a big part of the last uh, month or so of work, um, if you go back to the agenda of the last meeting, we talked about uh, elk common cartridge import and conversations in this meeting said, I you know, should go take a look at that. And I did. And I'd fixed a couple things and I told you about the things that were fixed, but then we identified a few more things that, that could be improved. And so I want to show you some of those things. You can see this documentation at uh, importcc.md with that link if you want. But the, the, first, the first thing that I want to tell you about is how learning management systems approach launchable LTI links. There are three ways that I know how to do this. The, the oldest way was what I'll call the matching technique. Um, it was the way Moodle did it in the very first thing now almost 10 years ago, where it just remembered the URL and it did not remember the key and the secret. It almost made it just like an href in the document. And what it would do is when you clicked on it, it would then go look up the key and secret based on a pattern of the URL. So, so you could have a bunch of links and then you would click on those links. And then the moment you clicked on the links, it's like, oh crap, do I have a key and a secret for this URL? And so there was this URL matching. And that's, Canvas may be different now, but that's certainly how Canvas did it in the beginning. It looked at all the tools and where are these URLs and here comes a launch. And right now I got to figure out what the key and secret is. That's not how Sakai has ever done it. And then the, I, this next one I call the denormalized version where every little link has got its own copy of the key and secret. And Sakai does neither of those. Um, and to some degree to Sakai's detriment, I teach database. And so I do referential integrity, even if it hurts sometimes. And so our links, when you see a link in lessons or you see a link, there is a, there's a database, a table called LTI content and a table called LTI tool. And there's a foreign key from LTI content to LTI tool. So let me um, show you, like all Zoom calls, let me show you how this works in practice. So if I go into Sakai and I go into the administration workspace, you see two tabs, you see tools and tool links. And if you were to look at the database, these tools are in a table called LTI underscore tool. And if you look at those tool links, they're in a table called LTI underscore content. And so in this, there are tools. These are not the links that you're launching. The links that you're launching in lessons or whatever are in this tool links. Right, and there's lots of these because there's one of these for every single link that you've got launchable. So sitting over here in this website under variables and expressions, there is a link. And if you hover over it, you'll see it jumps to this thing with slash access with content colon with a primary key. It's a funky variable name, but ultimately that leads to an entry in this content table. But then if you take a look at this content table, like I'm just going to just grab one and edit it, you'll see that it's got this drop down and that's the foreign key, right? That's if you use Django or anything else, you see that these are the foreign keys, meaning that I can reassociate and change the key in secret for this link to be something else. I'm not going to do it here, but it's just referential integrity. It's foreign keys. So, so that I'll pause to see if that if you have any questions about referential integrity, Sakai's approach. We do okay. have a question from Tiffany in the chat yeah, about um, yeah. the uh, the number of technical uh, details that the end user sees when they go to add a tool. Um, instructors in particular, I know you're showing the admin um, screen, but it's it's quite similar. Um, yeah. so she's, if Tiffany, you wanna elaborate? Yeah, so the problem is that in this UI where you set up all this stuff, there are a few places where it allows you to say whether or not be, these fields are editable. Can you edit the tool title? Can you edit the link title? Can you edit this, that, and the other thing? 
they have to be checked in the cases of many external tools that you link from lessons because the tool has to be capable of configuring that title on a per assignment or per item basis. Yep. So when these things are allowed to be edited, they also show up in the UI for the instructor as fields when they open up the pop-up add external tool. So the instructor is led to believe that they could enter a title and simply click create and the link is created properly and the assignment is linked properly. That's not the case. In fact, they have to click that launch external tool configuration when they do that pop up in order to select their assignment and do the appropriate linkage. Okay, so, so, so you're talking about two separate things, right? You're talking about two separate things. One thing is when you're going out and you are going to do an ad learning app and you're going to go out and you're going to grab that app and you're going to pick an app and you're going to you submit this app from Gradescope or whatever. And the key is, is this app, there's certain things that when you're using content item or deep linking in Sakai, things like the title and this text are stuff that's really supposed to come back from the tool. Right. And so, so what happens, the first pop-up that you say is confusing, and I totally agree, is if I hit this button and Sakai receives information that it considers incomplete, and it's not just because you check the button that says you can override these, it's because the tool didn't send it back. Now you'll see this is Sugi. Sugi sends it all back. There is no intermediate thing that says, and what that's really saying is this tool, whether it's grade scope or whatever, has not sent a title and has not sent text. And so just before you put it in, because it's not going to work very well if you don't put a title and text in, because what are we going to put here, right? And so it's pausing. Well, that's the first problem. No, that's that's not the place that I'm talking. So okay. sort of in that in that. Okay. So you're seeing a second but, problem. Then, well, then it's, that's the second problem. That's the it, one I've it, been fixing. Right? It's sort of in the same UI because when you just now entered that that title and um, it's right here had that yeah you so what what right. our instructors okay. are seeing is this but there's that's, also a launch configuration link and they have to click that launch configuration link to get where they need to be instead of t just typing a title and clicking save. Well, that that I you'll have to show me that this yeah. uh, I'm I can talk I'll talk about this particular thing, which is also really the it's not a great UX right, and that's what I've been working on for the past month is getting okay. rid of this. Okay, so let me talk about this, and then the other thing. Let's get let's circle back on that other thing because this is what I want to show that's been fixed. Okay. Thanks. So going back to the, the, the notion, Sakai does not want to put a link out if it also does not have a corresponding parent tool. And so this happens then when you are doing a common cartridge import. And so I did a common cartridge import into this website right here with that went to Python for everybody but I never install, I didn't install the tool first, okay? And if you go into this site, now I'm going in as the instructor now, and you look, what you see is under external tools, you see the global ones. Now, this PyFree wasn't there, I've added that later, but this tool got aut added automatically as part of the import, because Sakai is obsessed with having a tool for every link. And if you look, there's lots of links. Well, not lots, because I didn't import that all that much, but there could be many links that go to this thing. And that, that when it detects that it's launching to an incomplete tool like this one, it's like, oh crap, I can't launch, fix the tool. And that's kind of what it's doing here, right? It's, it's actually trying to fix the tool and it's not the best of user experiences. Now, part of the problem had to do with, and now I'm going to go to the documentation. Part of the problem had to do with the fact that during the import, the, the whole idea that Sakai wanted you to do was Sakai wanted you to install globally 
this website pyfree.com and then import all the links and then this would this second tool would never happen right and so if you look at the documentation in the latest versions of sakai when you're running them it has a set of rules and if i were to reimport this right now in another site because i've already got pyfree so if i go over to this site that has nothing imported in lessons Right, it's all sitting there, not the lessons. If I import a cartridge now into this website, after I've defined the global tool, you will see that everything just launches. You do not get that ugly screen. And if you look in this website now, you will see that it never created that little stub tool because it found this one. It found the global, the instructor, the admin installed tool. Prior to 20.3 and 21.0, it didn't find that tool. And so now if I take a look at, you know, this quiz and I edit it, you will see that it's associated with that tool. I didn't do anything to do that. I just installed globally Python for everybody. And as a teacher, if that's not installed globally and I'm allowed to install it here, I could actually install it locally and then they would reconnect, okay? So that's the first thing is then you can look at this import CC code and see that we have changed. Here's the whole tool matching during import and it works really hard to not build that extra tool that then leads to that crappy user in an interface. So that's that's new in the last month and should be out in uh, the next 20 X, 20, 20 and 21 release. Um, and then there's one other thing that we did because sometimes you are going to import a cartridge and import the cartridge and it's going to say, oh, this wasn't installed yet. So if, if, even in a modern Sakai, the latest Sakai, if you import a cartridge and you don't have a global tool registered for it, it still makes these little things. The problem is, so this is back in the site now that's got this problem of non-configured tools. So we get this nasty message, right? But here's the thing, I've made it so that you can take this little transfer button. What the transfer button says is there are some tool, some links that are pointed currently at Python auto. So if I go over here and look at the links in the site, this one here is pointed at Python auto. If I go back, yeah, go back and I say, I can say transfer now. And what that means is I can transfer every link in this site that thinks that its parent tool is Python auto. I can say, no, change them all. There could be hundreds here, absolutely hundreds of these things that, 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 that oh, okay. And I hit this transfer button. And so now the transfer button is gone here because there are no more links that point to this tool. And if I look at the links now, and I look at this link, you'll see that its parent tool is Pyfree 1.1. I've done nothing except transfer the links to the right tool. And now I can go back into lessons and now I can launch these and they're properly configured. So what I've done is I made it so that you can, you want, if you can, you install the tool before you import the links. If you import the links, and then install the tool later, you can transfer the links to the right tool. And so that's basically how we work around the fact that these things are, um, that, that, that these things want to have a connection to the place where the key and the secret is actually stored. And so that's all described here in import CC. Um, and for, for Sakai schools, um, they've been seeing this yucky thing that Tiffany's talking about um, that they've been seeing it for a while and the, they shouldn't see it. And so whether or not you install the tool 
before or after the import, it ought to work just great. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop there to see if there's any questions on um, the common cartridge stuff. Well, the, the thing that I was talking about is happening after the tool has been configured in the system, the parent tool, and the instructor is using the parent tool to generate a link in lessons. They're still seeing that ugly screen. Okay, well then, if, if that's what you're talking about, that is add learning app, go out here. That's, mm -hmm. that's the fault of the tool. If you're seeing, if you, 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 we can get on Zoom and you can show me this, but if Sounds at good. this point you are seeing an ugly screen and it doesn't go blink, blink, and it's there, mm -hmm. if you're seeing a screen between then and there and there, that is under the control of the tool. Sakai has gotten what it considers incomplete information from the tool. Now, okay. what you might be saying is we are asking too much information on that screen and there are things that, that they shouldn't override that's on that screen, if that's what you're talking about, mm -hmm. you're right. Okay. Yeah. If that screen itself is misleading. Probably what that screen should say is, because it's really only obsessed with the title and the text, but it, those are the things you could technically change, right? But you don't want to change any except two of them. So maybe what we should do is we should, we should have another like JIRA to say, don't ask for things in that phase of the install that can't shouldn't be changed because really the rest of that stuff shouldn't be changed. I think that yeah, yeah. My point is that the window shows the instructor several items. Yep. Yep. One of which is launch external tool configuration link. Underneath that is all these other fields. Yep. And they should never see all those other fields. They should just yep. see the one link. They click it. They do their thing. Okay. I'll. Uh... I'll, I'll write a JIRA for that and I will circle back around. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool about this is we, um, we can, we can sort of back the situation into a corner and now the, the remaining problem to solve is way smaller because like five giant things just got solved in the last month and a half. And now we got one little ugly thing and I can just write a JIRA, go after it and fix it. Okay. So let me uh, continue with our agenda. So resource link. Have, uh, sorry, we did have one question in the chat. Um, uh, Christina wants to know if we're talking about 1.1 or LTI 1.3. Everything that I just said applies equally to 1.1 and 1.3. And it actually not only applies to 1.1 and 1.3, it also applies to content item and deep linking. So everything we just said applies to that. Although with content item and deep linking, the parent tool is already known because that's how the content ID in ad learning app, in, in a sense, what's going on in ad learning app. But yes, LTI 1.3 works, right? It, it, it's the same. Can I move over here? There we go. So, um, when you're doing a content item, when you're doing like this ad learning app, the what the parent tool is, is known at that moment, because that now is, it, the content item is in effect launched to the tool, not to the content item, the, the selection. And so when it comes back, it knows what the parent, when it comes back from one of these ad learning apps, it knows. And so then it's not a problem at that point. Ah, not that. I hope I got that. Okay, I don't want to take forever. We'll have more of these. I don't. I want to get through all these things. Um, so I will say we've had in the last couple of these we've had some pretty good conversations about resource link ID history and content context ID history. And thank you all in this group for telling me that that's important. I went and I did some research. And I asked the other, some of the other vendors how they were doing it. And I thought it was hard. And then I got after it and it was not as hard as I thought. And so we've got two open JIRAs that should make it in the next release of 20 and 21 that fully support resource link ID history. You can go look at those two JIRAs. I, we got a QA hit on one of them. I'm not sure if it's really broken, 
um, but uh, they've been they both those those are now going to be supported going forward. But of course, they're only they're only good if we put the feature into Sakai and then the, the upgrade to Sakai and then a new semester happens, right? <laughs> so I can't go back in history and I can't go back and find all the things that have happened over the last 15 years as things migrated. But going forward, the good news is, is that thanks to some of the conversations in this meeting, um, this, this feature is going to be fully supported in the future. And given that it's a historical thing, it's gotta like be a breadcrumb, the quicker we get it in the better. I, this should be in the next 20 dot release and the next 21 release, well, 21.0. So that's good. I don't think there's too much question on that. There was not really, it's like, just do it. And so I just did it. So that's cool. It was easier than I thought. I just was walking into code that I wasn't familiar with. And so I luckily had some mentors that sort of gave me some guideposts, like the content ID history. If you dig into the JIRA for that, I, Oh, there was another. There was another thing. Content ID history is probably around forty lines of code when it's all said and done. I should have had it a long time ago. Okay. So, uh, anybody have any questions on resource link ID? That's more for the vendors, the tool vendors. Okay. Um, something that I want to show you, and it's documented in this import lor.md file, and that is a feature that you may not be aware of in Sakai. Oops, come back. And um, let's see if I got it right here. So if you're familiar with, um, let's, let me grab another site here, add lesson, oops, add some stuff here, manage tools, uh, add uh, discussions and gradebook, add lessons. So Canvas has this feature called content migration, where you can import content into, uh, import a subset of content into a class. And Canvas does this using their own very simplified protocol that's a pre-protocol to um, content item. The IMS content on it. It's, a, it's the Canvas content I haven't came out before. But but we we put into the standard something that kind of was approximately the same. And Sugi, um, Sugi supports both a standard way to do it and the Canvas way to do it. And so this is something for those of you who are tool vendors who want something other than to place a single link. And this is, the, and there, I've got document, that documentation, let me show you this documentation right here, shows you as a tool, tool vendor, how it is that you can do what we call the import placement, which would be content migration in, in Canvas, and what I send you and how you send it back and what the URL is supposed to be and how it works with LTI Advantage and how it works with LTI 1.1. So this is really just an, and as much as anything, an add to those who might be learning object repositories or publishers. And it, it leads to a use case, which is exactly how I use this, both in Canvas and in Sakai. And this is not add a single tool, but add a whole chunk of content. And so the external tool import, I showed you the content cartridge import, which is uploading a file. External tool is a common cartridge. It really is. If you're capable of producing a common cartridge, you're capable of meeting this protocol. So what it does is it launches. And if you take a look, it launches with some, some clues that say, look, I'm not asking for an LTI link. I'm not asking for an image. I am asking for a cartridge. Give me back a mini cartridge. And so that's what this documentation is saying. And it's, it, you can, this is telling you as a tool what you look at in the launch to know that I'm asking you to return me a cartridge. And what's cool about a cartridge is you can send me a whole hierarchy. Where am I, where am I? And so I could pull in the whole cartridge of this Python for everybody clause, but, but Sugi has this little thing that I can then get subsets. And so I could bring in functions and loops and iterations. And 
if you want to see how to do this, there's code in Sugi that's pretty easy to look at that does all this. And I can tell it thin or th sort of thick or thin cartridges. I can either tell it to turn discussions in my learning object repository into LTI links back to me, or I can use the LMS discussion tool, or I can use the discussion tool on this server, the Python for everybody with grade passback. And my YouTube links, I special handle this and I make it so you can actually use LTI launch to track access to YouTube videos that are sitting in this learning object repository. So I've done all this stuff and what I'm really doing is telling Sugi what kind of common cartridge I wanna give back to Sakai or Canvas in this protocol. And when I hit this button, you import selected modules. It actually doesn't send the data. What it does is it sends a thing back to Sakai that says, I've got your cartridge and it's at this URL. Canvas works the exact same way. And so at this point, came back. This is now a Sakai screen, not a Sugi screen. And Sugi, uh, Sugi is sent back to Sakai. Here's a URL to a cartridge that you can download for me and import into the, into the class for the student, for the teacher. And now Sakai, when I press this common cartridge import button, it's actually gonna read that cartridge from the external server, parse that cartridge, and then insert it into lessons. Now, if this is a lot, it takes a moment. This is not too much, so I'll say this. So I'm in Sakai, I'm back in Sakai right now, and I process common cartridge import, and it's doing a little bit of work. Work, 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 work. And now I'll close the button and you will see I now have two things that were imported in functions. Hey, hi, Sam. Two things that were imported. And if you notice, because of the others, this is just a cartridge. So there's, this is a cartridge that the teacher never touched, basically. The Sugi server produced the cartridge. The Sakai server took the cartridge. The Sakai server imported the cartridge. And the Sakai server, based on the new common cartridge features, has fully rendered all of these things. And so they're all ready to go. And so that's what I call, in effect, a progressive LOR style import. It's similar to Canvas's content migration, except that it, it uses content item and deep linking the right way. Canvas has their own way of doing it. But cool, the thing that's cool between Canvas and Sakai is both Canvas and Sakai return, expect a URL that has the cartridge, which then Canvas and Sakai retrieve and parse. And so you can make this work in Canvas and Sakai. The hard part is making the cartridge. The easy part is sending the message back that says, here's your cartridge. So you can make the same cartridge for Canvas, Sakai. And what would be cool, I mean, it, it's great. It's not that hard for you to build because you probably want to build a decent common cartridge exporter anyways. And so I have this, this is my Python for everybody common cartridge exporter. Now, this is just how to download cartridges versus import cartridges. But I use the same code to, in a sec sense, construct the cartridge and make a URL that is a cartridge. And once I've got that URL that is a cartridge, then I can pass it back into the LMS and then have the teacher never touch it. And it enables this really cool, um, you, you know, each week you go in and you grab the next week's worth of stuff, right? And so you can say, oh, I'm gonna grab, select content. Um, you know, I could say, oh, this is the week I'm gonna ta teach lists. And then I can say, give me that. And now it's gonna import the list bit of that, my course on the learning object repository. And so now the lists have come in. Now in lessons, you can take these imported content and hide them and you can sort of put them all up in here and drag sub pages up. That's, that's depending on how you wanna construct your site. We put it this imported content um, and then we let you move it around from there. But this, I just wanna, I wanna make you aware of how nice as a teacher, I find this progressive deep link content item import and, and Canvas, it's not that hard, even though Canvas is not a standard on this, it's not that hard to, uh, to comply with both Canvas and Sakai on this because Sakai does it standard. I don't know if like Blackboard or D2L or anybody does this. Um, 
I mean, I'll be honest, the, the place that, <laughs> the place that I learned to do this, some of you may or may not know, but I think 2014 and 2015, I worked as a Blackboard employee. And one of the things I did while I was a Blackboard employee that they paid me to do was build an integration into Sakai of a thing called uh, Explore. Oops, hang on, be quiet phone. Um, build a, import, uh, build a, a way to import through Explore, which was a learning object repository that uh, Moodle Rooms had made, that, that uh, Chasen bought, and I built all that. And it was, it was wretched, I'll, I'll be honest. Their protocol was wretched, their learning object repository. Um, it was cool, but then it was, there's cool parts of it and wretched parts of it. And the integration was wretched. And I was super glad when they stopped doing that and I threw all that code away out of Sakai. But what stuck with me was the beautiful ability to go out. Canvas Commons is kind of like this, to go out and grab a little piece of something and bring it in and grab a different piece of something and bring it in, have it all provisioned, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that notion that when I saw Blackboard's Explore, I'm like, I want it. I want that. I want that for me. I want it non-proprietary. Um, and, uh, and so that's where I, I built that I've been, I've been sort of jonesing on that use case and sort of snuck that into deep linking and content item with the content migration placement so that it, we could do that. And, and, and Canvas also saw that and they built their own thing. Like I said, it's not hard to be compliant with Canvas's non-standard way of doing it, Sakai's standard way to do it, because the hard part is the cartridge. The hard part is not the protocol. The hard part is the cartridge. So let's see. Oh, eight new messages. I guess I should probably. Oh, let's see. Duplicate site that's becoming outmoded. Um, Terry, the, the duplicate site, um, the duplicate site's been fixed too, right? It's not, I, I didn't talk about that. But we have been fixing duplicate site, and in and I know Terry that you guys are on twenty point two already, and I think there are fixes in duplicate site already. If not, your next release will have fixes where um, you would go from one site to the other inside of Sakai, and there would be broken LTI links. They're not broken anymore, and if they are, you can use the transfer function to fix them, and you don't have to go fix them by hand anymore. And I, and I saw on your LAMP server, I was, because the one place I'm teaching now, I'm teaching one class on the LAMP server. And I was like, I don't want to hand fix these. So I think I'll just fix the problem. So I did fix the problem. So Terry, the site copy inside of Sakai, while it's not precisely LTI, the site copy in Sakai is better and won't start spinning out these really silly little extra tools. And here's the thing. We could go into your LAMP server now and we could take all those little mini tools that are pointing at the wrong place, even if they've been like fixed by the professors and point them at the right place and delete all the crappy ones. And your, your UI will look a lot nicer because we can throw those crappy ones away. The transfer function, if, if even if you ran a Sakai 19 and it messed up, a you know, the import didn't work the way you wanted to and it got these little stub tools, you can use transfer to fix those stub tools when you get the version that's transfer. I, I think it might not be 20.2, it might be 20.3, um, that you're going to get that in LAMP, but you guys stay real close. And we thank you for that. So that's really good. And the other thing, Terry, um, that is for site copy, which I know a lot of schools do site copy inside Sakai, um, the whole content item history and context ID history and resource link ID history, that actually is almost nothing to do with LTI. That has to do with site copy. So that when these things are being copied, we are keeping track of the provenance of the both the links and the course content and then sharing that with folks like Gradescope or Turnitin or whatever to help them know that this link they're getting for Computer Science 100 Winter 2021 is the same link from Computer Science 100 Winter 2020 and they might copy some files over some images or who knows what they're going to do. But that turns out to be a really useful feature um, that will soon be and the place that the place you, if you look at that JIRA um, if you look at that JIRA, it, uh, you'll see that it's really about the test plan for the content, context ID history and resource link ID history. It doesn't talk about LTI at all. It talks about site copy 
And then it, you check to see if you got your history right by looking at an LTI launch. But ultimately, um, it's not particularly, it is copying LTI links. You're also, oh, it is about LTI. It is copying LTI links in site copy. But yeah, so we are, we're interested in making that work really well. Um, and so when we find, we take what we've got now with transfer and the matching in site copy and the resource link history and all that, you know, when we find something else, we'll go back and fix that too. We'll go clean that up too. I, I should, I should do a LAMP meeting on that, Terry. I should, I should just go with Martin and show Martin how to use the transfer function. I haven't done that yet because then your all your links would clean up. Yeah, but I would be happy to do a LAMP meeting to show you how to go clean all those links up and make your admin look a lot nicer and make all your websites look like, make your sites look a lot nicer. All the ones that had any kind of import or site copy have, have gotten possibly these broken links that have been fixed by hand. Um, so, and there's a way to clean them up even if you've already fixed them. Okay, so we're, oh, we only have one more thing to talk about, so that's nice. Um, yeah, and I don't know if I demonstrated this or not last time. Let me share my screen, let me share my screen. Come to me, Zoom, share screen, desktop two. Okay, so this part here, auto provisioning. I don't know if I demonstrated this or not. Um, it is uh, a spec that is not out. This is a spec that's in draft right now inside of IMS. And so if you're an IMS member, you should go look at it. I'm not going to show you the spec. I am going to show you how to use the spec. This feature will be in Sakai 21. And like all these things, I wrote some documentation from which we have developed test plans and it's being tested as we speak. And so this is telling you how to auto provision. Actually, I think it's 21.0 that it's gonna come out in just because of timing. And it's telling you that's, that's the whole thing. So let me quickly walk you through it. And then there is another thing here that, that I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk through at the same time, which we talked about last, I know we talked about last time, which is the, where is it? I thought there was a migration. Yeah, is this it? Yeah, LTI 1.1 to LTI Advantage migration. And this, so if you're a tool provider, sort of watch closely, right? So the provisioning, it, well, tool providers, the provisioning is interesting to our users as well, but the migration is interesting more to the tool providers. So I'm going to show you a tool that I have right now sitting inside my Sakai Nightly server. It's this Sakai Tsugi and I can move that off the screen. Uh, let's see, I can go, well, let's grab another, oops, let's grab another website here. Now let's grab another website. There's a lot of websites on Nightly. Let me put some tools into it really quick. Uh, put uh, discussions and lessons. If all these default Nightly sites had lessons, then I wouldn't have to do this every time to get them ready. Okay, so let's just start here. I've got a tool in add content that is an LTI uh, 1.1 tool configured. So that's an LTI 1.1 tool. It's a breakout game, okay? So that's coming from this Sakai Sugi. And if you take a look, I mean, I, I, can, I can edit this. And if I go take a look at the Sugi from whence this comes, it is an LTI 1.1. It's got a secret, but it is not yet an LTI 1.3. So I'm gonna show you a use case of promoting an existing LTI 1.1 tool. So you don't see any LTI 1.3 data here. You don't see that it supports LTI 1.3 but you do see this button. And this is actually something you do in Sakai. You can start fresh or you can edit an existing LTI 1.1 tool to add LTI Advantage auto configuration to it, okay? 
So I go over here into Sugi, and if you're a tool vendor, you've got to come up with a way to feed this information. And I'll just show you what this information looks like by just popping it up. It is, ooh, what did I do wrong? Oh no, this is, this is designed to be posted to, so that's not the actual configuration. Come back. So I'm gonna copy this URL and I'm gonna go over to Sakai. Yep. And I'm gonna say, in effect, upgrade this security arrangement. So there's a security arrangement inside Sugi, security arrangement inside Sakai, and I wanna upgrade this to support LTI Advantage. So then I pass this configuration URL and it actually then, there's then it exchanges some information. As a matter of fact, there's some JSON that comes back and forth. That's some JSON, some JSON that's going back and some JSON that's coming back. And when it's all said and done, you basically say, oh, okay. And some data has been exchanged through web services in the background. And when you come back, it goes, here we come. I imported some data. So what happens now, if you look, the key and secret are still there. And that's essential to the LTI 1.1 to LTI advantage transition. But you see all of this data and this fact, and as a matter of fact, these checkboxes have all been set by the JSON that came from the tool. So this tool has been upgraded to an LTI Advantage tool. And so I'm gonna say save. Now, if all goes well, I now should be able to come here and do breakout. And it just did an LTI Advantage launch to that same repo with the LTI 1.1 migration spec all set. And so the data has been, I mean, not migrated, that's the wrong thing. And Sugi knows to connect the LTI 1.1 user with the LTI 1.3 Advantage uh, person. And um, you can do this by hand. You don't have to do this with the magic thing. You can, if you get all these values in external tools right, if you edit these, there, all the Advantage Auto Configuration did was came up with a way to make it so you don't have to paste any of this information in. End of story. And so that's what it was doing. And it's a pretty simple spec. Um, we tested it with Moodle and Cengage and Sakai and Sugi. And literally within 10 minutes, everything was working in all combinations of that. So this is a really good spec. Um, if you aren't, you don't have an existing LTI 1.1 tool in here, there is a way to just say, you know what, start from scratch. I don't, I'm not going to put a tool in there. I'm not really doing any migration. This is a brand new thing. This is a brand new vendor. All they got is LTI Advantage. You go into this LTI Advantage auto provision and you say zap, and then you click auto provision, and then you click the button, and then you go like that. This is probably gonna blow up. I don't know if it will or not. And so that is, if I did it, let's do it. I'm gonna call this Sakai through it too. <laughs> so, so this has no, when it's done, it has no key and no secret. The fact that I'm launching the same thing might cause me great grief, but all this data has been sent through the auto provisioning uh, thing. And, oh no, I don't know. So this may or may not work. I, let's see if it works. Yeah, so the problem is, is that I've kind of overwhelmed it. If, I, if I'd installed another one, it'd have been fine. And I probably could have figured out how to make this one work. Uh, oh, wait a sec, I bet I can. I need to just add the tool. I need to, the, it's not, oops, that wasn't, that link got sort of eaten. So here's Sakai 2. Let's see if I can get Sakai 2 to work. Is it happy? Let's break, install my document annotator. Go. Document annotator. Yeah, so that's okay. So it worked. The problem was, is this other one was a link to the other thing, which I kind of messed up <laughs> by installing another thing to the exact same place. But you get the idea. So again, from point of view, we have goals. Our goal is, is so that if you are an LTI vendor and you wanna do a good LTI 1.1 migration to LTI Advantage, if you wanna do progressive LOR import, um, 
you know, anything, whatever it is we want to be here so that in time we get these beautiful integrations to work and we want to do our part on our side. And because Sugi does so much, you can also look at the Sugi code to see exactly how Sugi does it because Sugi's open source as well. And I will, I will stop there to give us a little bit of time for, uh, for questions, et cetera. Yep, we've got about eight minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recorder now so we can have our uh, question time without being uh, recorded for posterity. <laughs> but uh, let me go ahead and stop that. Thank you guys. So any, 